Hey guys, it is Patrick. And before you dive into this intermediate accounting lesson, I wanted you to know that you can actually download the notes for this section and specifically this lesson that you're about to watch if you head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com or you can head over to the description link that's below and I'll put that link to those notes below where you can find them, download them, and print them, and follow along as you watch this lesson. So go do that, and here is your intermediate accounting lesson. All right, in this lesson, we're gonna go over financial statement reform. This is in response to fraudulent financial statements that were occurring in the early 2000s. Now, when we talk about financial statements reform, we're actually talking more about Sarbanes-Oxley Act in the early 2000s, a numerous high profile financial statement fraud cases forced the passage of Sarbanes-Oxley Act. It was formally called the Public Company Accounting Reforms and Investor Protection Act of 2002. And because that is a mouthful, it has been named the uh, Sarbanes-Oxley Act or SOX after the legislators who came up with this act. So this is kind of the reform that changed a little bit about how we did accounting for public companies to ensure or to restore investors' confidence in the financial reporting of companies' financial statements. Now, SOX only pertains to co public companies. So when we talk about SOX, it only pertains to public companies. Companies. However, it did have an effect in the private markets as well. So even though this was only geared to public companies, because those public companies' financial statements are out in the open for anybody to invest in their stock using the stock market exchange, um, we see have seen how this is in fact uh, the the private company sector, and it has kind of the same ramifications there as it does uh, for public companies. Now, the main changes that I want to highlight here is that the first requires something called a mandatory partner rotation after five years. And what that means is that for a public company, their financial statements must be audited before they can be released to the public. So the auditor that is usually hired to audit that company's financial statement usually will have someone called the partner in charge. The partner in charge is the one that's responsible for the overall audit of that company's financial statement. They're the last ones to sign off on the financial statements for the public accounting firm. The problem with what has happened prior to 2000 was that we had partners that were on these engagements for 20, 25 years, and they built really good relationships with the companies that they audited. And what Congress had saw was that provided the opportunity for fraud to happen on the financial statement because these partners would just uh, overlook items because they knew the people that they were auditing very well because they developed relationships for 20, 25 years. And so in order to stop that, Congress said that your partners can be on those engagements for no more than five years and must rotate off. So what this did was instead of the partner staying with that company for 20 years, they can only stay for a maximum of five years and then they would have to roll off that client onto a different client and someone else comes in as the partner in charge. Now, that new partner in charge can stay there for five years or stay there for two years, but the maximum they can stay is five years. This ensures that there isn't this tight knit relationship that's developed to where the auditor is not using professional judgment when auditing the company's financial statement. So that was a big change because a lot of these client, a lot of these partners really liked their clients and developed those relationships that were important to keeping that client with that accounting firm for a long term, um, con, uh, long term commitment. The other thing that, uh, the other main change to Sarbanes-Oxley is the emphasis on internal controls by management. So what that means is that, is that auditors are required to audit the effectiveness of the company's internal controls while auditing the company's financial statement. So because there was this emphasis on internal controls and that management was responsible for these internal controls, auditors then had to spend time to audit the effectiveness of those internal controls which means that we had to do more work associated with those internal controls to ensure that those controls are working effectively. And so that was another major thing because most of the time we were just auditing the 
the financial statements. Now we're not only just auditing the financial statements, we're actually reviewing and auditing the internal controls. So that's the big thing here about financial statement reform. There's a lot more to learn about it, which we'll talk more about as we go through this course. But again, kind of the basic things that you need to know is that we had Sarbanes-Oxley Act that was passed in 2002. And the reason for this was due to fraudulent financial statements that occurred in the early 2000s. Congress had to do something about it. It, uh, to restore investors' confidence so that investors would continue to invest in companies by continuing to invest in companies that in uh, that investment increases uh, the the overall economic um, atmosphere of the United States. And so they had to do this to keep that investor's trust, which is necessary for them to actually invest into companies. And so SOX does, or SOX is that attempt to be able to do that. It did require some changes and some of the changes we talked about here, and we'll talk more about it as we go through this course. So hope you enjoyed this lesson. We'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching this lesson. If you enjoy what you saw, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to write something in the comment section below, like, I don't know, what's your favorite superhero? If you are looking for the next intermediate accounting lesson, make sure you click on this button right over here. And if you wanna to head to my website and see all of the lessons that are available, make sure you head to my website right here. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.